what I'm gonna do is show you step by step how I can, and then we're going to blend up the mixture, heat it up, and start canning. right into actually heating up the mixture and starting to put the mixture into jars. Then we can start canning. And it's key that this mixture is hot in order to can. Everything you can has to be hot from the jars to the lids to the mixture to the canner. So that's why we turned everything on. Okay, so let's get this on the hot plate right here. Let's turn this on to medium high heat. So now basically all I need to do is let this mixture heat itself up to where it's hot. I have 
these um, I have the wide mouth snap lids they just need to be warm you don't I you don't need to boil this water as long as it just stays warm you're good with that I have my canner and it is warm it's not it's not boiling hot right now and I'm not going to turn it up in temperature until I get my jars in so everything stays around the same temperature. I have my oven to 250 and now that it's been on for 250 for about 10 for about 10 minutes I'm actually just going to cut down the temperature because the jars are sterilized now. Now I just want the jars to stay warm so I'm going to put it back down to 170 now the jars are going to stay warm the water is going to be warm but nothing's piping hot and so when I put the hot mixture in there I'm not going to have any shock or cracking when I put the hot jars in the canner the liquid's warm like I shouldn't say it's warmer than warm it's on the verge of being hot but it's not such there's no big temperature changes in here then I will heat up the canner with the jars to a boil so that's kind of my setup personally and right now we're just gonna wait for my mixture here to get piping hot so we can start canning so we are ready to can here. It's nice and hot. You can see that it is starting to boil. You can kind of see it kind of makes a movement there. This canner is warm. So what I'm going to do now is prep here for canning. So I'm going to explain what I need to do. I need to take my jar out of the hot oven. I'm going to put my jar up here. Then I'm going to scoop the hot liquid into the jar using a funnel so I don't make a mess. Then from there I need to put on a hot um, snap lid on it and then I need to take one of these one of these lids, put it on there, then put the jar into the canner and then do it all over again seven times as there are the this canner fits seven jars and then I need to bump up the heat on the canner and make sure that I have water that's an inch over the top and if not then I need to add in water into the canner so that's kind of it in a nutshell so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the camera over to Grace and so take a break from your bendy wax sticks and you're ready to film mom? Yeah. Okay, so she's going to film me as I go. I'm not going to talk much because I need to move quick on this, but I gave you an overview. Now you just need to watch me in action. So, Grace, you're six. Do your best filming, okay? All right. Let's go. And if you notice while I'm scooping this, I do have a piece of paper towel over um, from my stove to the counter. So one, it just catches the drips as I go and it's easy cleanup. And so when you're filling up your jar, I leave head space right here. I'm only going to fill it up to basically where, the, where you screw on the lids. That's where I fill it up to. Okay, now you notice that I'm going to use something with, with that is magnetic. This is actually what the people use in mechanics or any time you're trying to pick up screws. This is actually found in the hardware section. I love it for canning. I think it works better. And that's what I use. So now I grab a piece uh, or some um, a tea towel because this is hot just to tighten it so I don't touch my hot jar because it is hot. Then I grab my jar, put it into my canner, just like this. And you'll notice that 
once in a while the metal part here falls down make sure you do have this metal basket in here if you put a jar right into a hot canner without any barrier at the bottom you'll bust your jars And you'll notice here, take a look here, I did a pattern and I did that very specifically and on purpose because if I put all my snap lids uh, in that mixture all the same direction, then when I take my magnetic rod to it, they all come up at once. So if I follow this pattern that I've kind of made up myself, it just works really slick and I don't get more than one lid. In the canner we go with jar number two. So I'm going to do these seven jars the exact same way here and I have more mixture than seven jars, more mixture to fill but I'm going to leave a little behind for the kids to enjoy a little bit of rhubarb strawberry sauce. I always do that. It will be only a couple of jars for them, but they'll quite enjoy it. And that way, I also don't have this strawberry and rhubarb in the freezer. It's already made, ready to go. Okay, so now we have all seven jars in the canner and the water is covering, but I'm gonna add just a little bit more water. The temperature is still under medium high heat, but a little bit more water would be good to cover them. So I'm just gonna go over to my sink here and I'm going to get a little bit more water. There we go. That's better. Okay, so you want at least about an inch over the top, which which would be good. It's kind of hard to see, but it actually is. is. And um, now I want to bump up my heat. So I'm going to bump it right up. I'm going to cover it. And now I'm going to wait for it to hit a steady simmer. Once it hits a steady simmer, I'm going to turn down the heat just enough to keep it at that steady simmer for 15 minutes in our area. 
So this other thing is I'm going to turn off the oven. I've already turned off the hot plate to my sauce. I'm going to turn off the hot plate here to this liquid and now I'm just concentrating on the canner. So now you can see why I use the paper towel. Basically now I'm going to throw this into the sink and it just makes it really nice, easy cleanup and and I don't, you know, have to have such a mess on my counter. So that's what's really, really nice about it. All these tools that I'm using are all found in the kitchen area. The, these here are especially for canning. Like I said, my husband actually picked this up for me. This is just magnetic rod in the tool section. It's actually for just picking up screws and stuff like that, but it works really good for canning. And like I said, this here, I mean, this is just a standard um, tong in the kitchen kitchen section of your Canadian Tire or where, whatever you got there. So nothing really crazy special here. Some pretty standard stuff, but also critical to have these to pick up the hot hot jars in the canner. So with that being said, let's just give this a look. It's not going to take long because the water is already hot. Now it's just going to get up to a boil. As you can see, you can see the bubble start. That means we are at a boil and I am now going to turn the temperature down just enough to keep this at a simmer. Now I don't ever can with a heavy boil, just a light simmer just to keep it going. So I'm going to now turn the lid on so it keeps it like that. And basically I'm going to do that for 15 minutes. Then I'm going to pull it out of the canner and I'll show you and I'll show you my technique with that. So the canner, canner is ready and what we're going to do is we are going to just pop the lid off and turn off the hot plate for five minutes. What this does is depressurizes the canner. And so when you bring up the jars, everything's safe and ready to cool down. So I'm just going to put five minutes here in the timer and just kind of wait. Now if you were going to do a, a, another round, basically what I would do is take the new jars and start again, turn the hot plate back on to low heat and just put the jars in and just continue on. But this, I'm only doing one batch here today. Now that the canner is done depressurizing, we're going to take them out one by one and we're going to put them over at the table. Now if you can see at the table here, there is a towel down and that is the reason that I put the towel down so the canning jars can drip onto the towel and since the canning jars are hot, it doesn't burn the table. So I'm going to grab this one here by the lid and slowly lift it up and let the water drip out. I sometimes angle the jar a bit and let the water drain off from the top. Then I have a tea towel in my hand because this is really hot water and I got a distance to go. So I just literally hold it over the tea towel, bring it onto this towel and all done. And that way there's no dripping on the floor, there's no mess, and I don't get burnt at the same time. And if you heard that pop, that pop is the snap lid ceiling. So that's a really, really a good sound to have. So if you listen carefully, you'll probably hear some more popping.
And these last few jars, you notice I'm not actually angling them because as the water level decreases, because I am taking the jars out, then the water on, there's not as much water on top of the snap lids. So there you have it. We have seven jars completely done. Now what you want to do is wait 24 hours. Sometimes it does take a little bit of time for them to seal. Sometimes it's as soon as you pop them right out of the canner, but let them relax for 24 hours. So tomorrow I'll show you how to test to see if they're actually sealed and then we're going to move them into the cold storage room. So this is the next day. These jars are ready to go down to cold storage, but first we need to make sure that they are sealed. Now it's very easy. Basically, I just touch the top and if they're not, this here will go up and down. So this one's sealed, this one's sealed, this one is, this one is, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah and yes. So they're all sealed, which is fantastic. Now, if you notice the little white on here, that's actually mineral deposits from our water, so that's no big deal. Now, the other thing some people just don't realize is that you can actually take these rings off. They don't need to stay on because they really, the purpose of having them on is to hold the snap lid in place down in order for it to seal to the jar. But after it has cooled down, it really serves no functional purpose and you can actually use these for more jars. So in cold storage, let's see if I can do this with one hand, there you go. In cold storage, I leave my jars like this and then I use these for my next batch. So that's one way to also save money is you don't need to have a hundred of these, you just need them in order to get these sealed because this is sealed. This isn't going to go anywhere. So that's one tip, one cost saving tip with canning that I can give you. So now all we need to do is grab this, take it down to cold storage and we're done. So enjoy your wonderful rhubarb sauce and I will see you on the next video.